Hey guys, uh, got a little treat for you today. We are installing a uh, Dual Z mechanical kit. Uh, I prefer this kit. We sell both kinds, but uh, this has been really popular with my customers um, to stabilize uh, your X beam on here. Uh, you still need to, and I think I mentioned it in the video, you still need to adjust your wheels on the right hand side so you don't get any twist in your X-beam that doesn't make that go away and the best time to do it is when you start out uh, before you install the brackets and stuff on it and it'll go through step by step how to do it while you're doing it um, it's real important that you know uh, we worked really hard to bring this kit to you it's our own idea we've had other I've seen other um, kits on the not on the market necessarily but I've seen a Thingiverse uh, things my Ford boy has a, a kit out there but it takes a longer belt one of the your lead screw is offset to the side of it and um, that didn't make any sense to us so th we invented this in fact um, I have a guy working for me he's worked for me for 18 years and uh, he's a genius um, I can't do this without the people that work for me I can't say enough about um, the people here uh, we have a group of four uh, employees and everybody's really close here and we get the job done we've all been together for a really long time and uh, we make some really cool stuff happen so uh, with no further ado uh, I'd like to explain how this kit goes together and if you have any questions I know I've kind of spin through this thing real fast because it's a kind of a how-to video for anybody that's installing the kit so if you have any questions about it please leave them down below I'll be happy to answer them for you I appreciate you being here look into this thing we are on the website and uh, we'll we have all of the parts available most of the time we get them from a lot of different suppliers so it's it's um, going to be available sometimes sometimes not so if you see the button is lit up the purchase button hit it if you want one of these things because they're going in and out um, real fast so thanks for being here guys i appreciate it my name is dave ashenbrenner and uh, enjoy the video thank you the purpose of this video is to install our mechanical dual Z kit. Um, we're going to, uh, I'm going to try to assemble, sub-assemble all of the small things so that we don't fumble through this thing. Um, you guys will figure this thing out anyway, I'm sure. Um, so with no further ado, let's get rolling on this. Um, first thing I'd like to say on this is I have the uh, gantry stabilization kit on this. This doesn't have to be removed but I'm just to make this a little bit easier uh, there's a few little pen strokes here that we can uh, gain if we take this off so I'm gonna go ahead and just loosen this up I'll loosen this up and then uh, most of these tools are in your kit in your, your CR 10 tool kit you've got a five millimeter bolt holding this on these are these are loose make sure those are looser you'll uh, you'll shear off that little that little pin there's a little knot here so we're just going to kind of pull this out of the way not get it all kinked up so we got this free what that does is it helps us put the bearing block on so we're going to go ahead and just install the bearing block we've got the t-nuts already installed in here um you're going to ask me for a size it's pretty obvious this is these are the only uh, bolts that are the right size for that they're four millimeter and then they have the hammer nuts on them so we're just going to install them flush with this end okay and we're going to do the same thing to the other end we're going to take the checking these for tightness here we're good and stock okay we're going to take the stock one off you see where for our view here Once again, we're going to turn our string loose. It's got a lot of play in there. I have my machine running because I might have to elevate the, the Z up and down. It's a lot easier than fumbling with it. So out we go with the hammer nut. Off to the side. Okay, out with the bearing block. Now we're going to be using this rod over on this side. Let's straight up. Let's make sure we got that other hammer nut out of here. 
I'm going to remove the rod using the small Allen wrench. I think it's the same one you use for all your three millimeter screws. And we're just going to pull that rod out of there. Um, what I'm doing here is taking the top um, of the two grub screws or set screws in the that little spring-loaded motor coupling here. We're taking the top one and see some of them have two so be careful. Um, and just look here, this one has two, the other one only has one. We're going to loosen up both of those grub screws. We're going to hold on to the motor coupling. We're going to spin this whole thing up. And out. You see what I did there? I went one way and then the other. There's nothing holding up in your Z right now. Which, by the way, let's, let's play this little game here. Okay. So we're going to spin this out of here. Okay, that will be going into here. We've got some bearings to put onto that. We're going to keep track of which one the bottom is. Okay, next step is to put these bearing blocks on. Um, the reason this is important is that if we have a little trouble with those hammer nuts like we did on this side, this will help us out. So I'm just going to go ahead, set these nuts in position. Okay, once again, even with the outside of the top of the top beam here. Before we put the rod in, we have to remember to put our collar and the bottom bearing into this. So everything that's going below this uh, will get put, thread our rod through. Okay, in your kit, you will have four eight millimeter by 16, I believe, flanged bearings. There'll be two on each side. You'll have two set collars, eight millimeter set collar. Open up that set collar. Okay. So in this order, first the first the set collar goes on. The bottom, then the flange. Thread them right through, like so. It gets threaded down here. Now, we're going to reset where the set collar goes, so um, I'm going to caution uh, everyone on keeping that, not over tightening that set collar because it'll probably uh, mar the. in there good. You'll hear it hit the bottom of the, the base of your you're actually hitting the other side of the motor shaft with this I believe. Okay those are permanently in there now so you can go ahead and snug the bottom two on the 
motor coupling. Okay. This is pretty much where it's going to be. There's going to be some slack in this. This is on purpose. This uh, helps it float a little bit in there. Um, so may be retuning this at some point. We're going to kind of set it um, kind of snug up against the bottom of the block there. And I didn't push down too tight on it. This may we may be readjusting that before we're done. We're gonna do the same thing over here, exactly the same. Hey guys, I, I was going over my videos and uh, noticed, um, I'm gonna kind of break in here. I noticed the uh, attaching these was a little unclear and that's a very important part of this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna reshoot this video and show you how this bracket gets attached. The best way to attach this and maintain your tension on your wheel. So just bear with me a second. Okay, um, I'm going to disassemble it. Now, this is the bracket, and we installed these bearings, installs with two three millimeter bolts on here. Let me get rid of some of this grease so you can see those. So you've got uh, two three millimeter bolts here with three millimeter nuts on the back. You just tighten that up. It doesn't matter which way this up or down or what side of the, is the bearings are on on this. This never comes up far enough to touch the top of this anyway. Even if you flipped it over, there's a stem down here. Um, but we know that it won't get in the way of anything if we leave the stem down. I think it looks better this way. Whatever you want to do on that. So, that being said, um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. I don't know if there's a run on these 40 millimeter by 5M 40 screws but I could only get them in a Phillips head so for this video uh, might be a little different where I've got the Phillips screwdriver versus the, the Allen wrench. I like the Allen wrench better because I can get closer to it when it comes time to tighten the wheels I've got more control over it but we're going to make it through with this. Whichever screws you guys get in your kit they're going to work just as well. The business end of the screw is the same so okay now I want to, this is kind of a little trick, when you're replacing your screws in here, best way to do is you just take a screw um, and, you, and, you, and you put it in like this and it holds everything together while you replace the other screw in it. Uh, this particular one, however, we're putting, we're putting this spacer in it. So if you see what I just did there, these spacers will be added. This is an 8 millimeter long by 5 millimeter spacer we're going to put in here. And I'll actually disassemble this whole thing. This is how this looked before. Before we got to it. So I'll just do this to one so you guys get an idea of kind of how what, what we do to this thing. So the original one just had this shorter bolt, if you can see it, and and this nut holding it in. So I, I think that's as far as I need to go to illustrate how it came. Imagine the head over here. And that was on both of these. So we're going to go through it on one. This, if I took this bolt out, this shaft will just dangle all by itself. It's very easy to slip when you've got this shaft on here. It's easy to slip this bracket onto here. Um, the sequence shows it. Uh, on the other video, but like I say, it was it was cut off right about here, so you couldn't see what was going on down here. That's unfortunately when you're the producer and cameraman and director and everything else. Sometimes that happens. So when I was editing, I realized we had a, we had an issue there. So I'm going to take this nut off, like you would normally. Okay, not quite as eloquent. All right, so let's say. This was the, is the old screw I'm taking out, use the new screw, this won't be in the way now, but use the new, uh, use the, uh, one of the old screws, one of the new screws to do that. Pick your new screw up out of the package, pop it on here, pop it on here, it keeps everything aligned if there's any washers or spacers in there. Okay, now you bring this right to the edge there, you're going to insert this. 
spacer in here, line it up with the bolt. Then you have to cheat, bring your wrench over here, and push that in, kind of line it up. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, same process for this one as this one. Anybody has any questions? Let me know if they got a question on how I got this on here. When this shaft was off and it showed it in the other video before the belt was on. Can you see that? Okay. Before the belt was on this pulley, I could lift this pulley up by loosening this collar underneath here and this shaft will go up or down. You can um, pull this up or down to where you want it to position if you screwed this on to the shaft you'll screw this onto the shaft up about five inches up or four inches up you can then lift this whole shaft up with that connected to it and put in do the procedure that we're doing right now once that's done once these screws are in once everything's there like that this may stick up you just simply screw it down till it gets to the spot where it is right now slide the collar your collar will be loose on there slide the set collar that's right here underneath there slide that up and give it some tension keep it in place while you go through the rest of the procedure that i outlined later on in the video or earlier in the video which whichever one comes up i'm not sure where i'm going to edit this in but um, you get the idea and like i say ask me if you there's any questions or nothing something's not clear this is a very simple part of the simple part of the video though so i'm just going to go ahead and uh, finish up tensioning this bolt uh, one of the real important uh, parts of this is to get the wheel against this uh, with the proper tension right now it has that proper tension, but we want, just want to make sure. And I've got another video out there. Um, it's called Leveling Your X-Beam. And it's got a wealth of information. If you don't have the any of the um, eccentric bolts or nuts or anything, it's kind of a way to cheat to bring all of the tension in on the wheels equally without putting tension on the other side that's that's really the trick that these two upright beams stay parallel to each other while you're going through that whole operation on that so if that doesn't make sense I'll elaborate on it all you have to do is ask me okay and right now I'm gonna get that nut where it's contacting the bracket some of you may get their brackets and say this bracket isn't made out of eighth inch steel, stamped steel. What up with that? That's because when this nut goes up here, there's different plays, different uh, forces that this encounters. This screw may be a little further away from it. Rather than put pressure on this and the bearings and the nut, the, the bracket will slightly flex. I don't know if you can see that. The bracket will flex to um conform to those pressures it's it just the way to do it it's just the, the forces that this bracket is taking right now are up and down forces it has nothing to do with how thick this metal is on here trust me I've been designing machines forever so that was done on purpose that's not the cheap outing okay i'm going to grab a hold of the back side of this bracket and i'm going to take this wheel in this hand this those fingers sort of like eating with chopsticks these fingers are going to hold this nut in place and I'm going to screw in righty tighty with my left hand while I push in on this right here. So that is going to put pressure on this wheel and that wheel does not turn up very, very slightly. This is perfect serviceable limits on this wheel and this wheel right here. This is tight, that's tight, and the opposite one is tight. We have all three of these wheels in tension right now using this bracket. Uh, that has steadied this whole thing. One of the downsides of not having these tight is this type of slop you'll get in this. And that's what equates to a bad print. So once you tighten these up, 
all three of these wheels are making equal pressure against here. You'll have a really nice print, irregardless of whether you have a second Z on there or not. So, anyway, I hope that helps, guys. Hope my video helped. Next, I'm going to thread this rod. Bearing first, flange down. That's a nice tight fit. That's the way it's supposed to be. That way the, the race spins instead of the the inner race doesn't spin on the rod. It, the inner race will spin against the outer race. Okay, and before we get too crazy here, set nut. Let's spin this in. So, I'm going to kind of make the assumption that we're level here at this point. So we're going to measure these two. Okay, make sure you're bearing seats up in there. We're going to get a little measurement on these two. You can just use a, a, a tape measure or a ruler is fine on this. We're just doing a comparison so even a piece of string will set amount that it's got to be up. 30 millimeters translates into 1.19 I said 2.525 earlier, that was incorrect. That's the amount that we cut off the end of that rod when we make these things. So, wow. Right here. We got that good. Again, right. this is not does not have to be perfect. Okay, we we are pretty much home. I'm gonna do the snug. I like to go around when we're all done and just give everything a tight. Anyway, so. I don't like putting burrs on, on these shafts because if you have to slip that bearing past that point, it'll catch on it and then you're, you're opening up another can of worms on that thing. Okay, next. Um, we What's gonna lock this into place is the, the bearing over the top of this and the flange holds this from going one way or the, way or the other. So what our objective is here when we put the bearings on, of course, the flange sticks up. It's going to be tight. Okay. Bearing flange against the bearing block. Same thing over here. Don't you love it when a flange comes together? Okay. So those are stable. These are actually slotted and they're made to, to move forward and backward. That way, if there's any... Uh, difference in tolerance against the back here as you're coming up these will freely slide in here So that's that's not that's not a problem um, However, when your Z is going up and down if these bearings aren't both seated tight Against this block you'll actually create a backlash in here that will allow this whole side to come up and down The little backlash in the bearing so it's real important that you get this Next step when we put those gears on there have to be down tight against there so, and, and you want to maybe pull up on the bottom and make sure the bottom's seated in there. So, okay. So the way we do this, and, and uh, we're, we put these, we put these gears. I'm sorry, we put these pulleys on 
what some people would consider upside down on here. And we're going to have a little shaft sticking up out of here. And the reason we have that is we still have some adjustment if we need it. If you want to cut it off later, that's fine. Uh, this one you can actually adjust down further with the set screw. Um, this one, I think the motor's adjusted all the way up on here, so I think you'd have to actually cut on, on this particular one. So, all right, we're going to pull these down, opening this up. Two grub screws, Allen screws, grub screws. And this is important that we get these down against the bearing block, and we're going to pull up on the bottom while we push down on the top. This, snug, this just a little bit. It, it's got right hand threads on it, so if you snug down on it, you can actually screw it just a little bit and get a little bit out of that um, to, to kind of make sure that you're tensioned down. Like I said, it's not that important on this one here. It will be on that one because that's got the slack. Um, the other end of this rod is connected to the motor and that, and that coupling, so it doesn't allow it to go this way. Um, it's not going to come up because the, the set collar on the bottom isn't going to allow it to come up, but it'll want to go down. This is like the set collar on this side of the shaft, on this side of the bearing block. So, we got that nice, there's no slack in it, turns really nice and loose, do the same thing to the other side. Okay, we'll push up on that, we're going to just give this little grub screw just a, just a little tension here. Now we're going to, I gave it just, I don't know if you saw that or not, we gave it just a little, little tweak. And you can see it, it'll actually pull itself down uh, into there. So that one's where it needs to be. I'm going to give this one a little tension. This is good. That's good. Okay. This is, it, you got to be real careful, you don't want to tighten these, are such tiny screws here. A lot of people complain that their wrenches aren't, the wrenches that you get with the Creality aren't up to par. You, you know, they're actually, they're not, but if you're tightening <laughs> these screws tight enough to, to twist this wrench, there's a problem somewhere else. So, um, my advice is just be careful with those. Okay. I'm, because I've got this goofy spool in here, I don't know that this is level, so I'm going to do one of these things. I'm just going to run this real quick over the, the beam and just see where we are. We're there on that one. And we're there on that one. Yeah, we're scratching the surface. We're, we're level, level to the bed, uh, which was what it was when we started out irregardless of whether the bed's level or not. So, um, we're, we're done really basically with this mechanical part of it. it. It's pretty easy as you can see. We're going to, um, we're going to throw some grease on these things later. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these screws up because it's time so we don't forget. These are the grub screws on the bottom collars. And I'm just giving them a tweak. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. There's only one grub screw, and it's pretty big, so I think that's I think that's sufficient. We got we got movement on both sides, and it's nice and smooth. Okay, um, this is where it's important to level it because once we hook the belt to it, you're locking these two together. You will have no drift when you shut your machine off. It may go up or down, but both of them will go up and down at exactly the same point. So. Um, I'm going to use these like I'm kind of not liking that tension over here. Now, part of that might be the, the lube on there. The other part might be the, the tension, so I'm going to relax that just a little bit. We know we got the height up here. We know we got the height up there, so I'm going to relax this just a little bit by backing off on this.
and we want it to be up against it but we don't have to have it real tight against it so boy that that was it right there so we had a little too much tension in here and if you push up and down on this rod and if there's any play in it you'll you'll see that you'll you'll hear it and see it but this is about perfect it's not binding anymore though so that's a real important part of this is, is what we call tuning it so we got that tuned this one here is real nice I'm doing the up and down no problems on this guy okay uh, once again now it's time to make sure we got this thing leveled so this is the this is the important time for leveling right here this isn't just a so you got your friends don't make fun of you part of the leveling job this is the I want this at rest, so I'm gonna I'm, I'm pushing these both the same way, and I'm putting a little bit of pressure on them so that they don't that they don't move. So here we go. Okay. Okay, this one's it's a little tighter over here, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it over here. I'm gonna pick this one up just a little bit, and I'm gonna put this one down just a little bit, and I think we're right about level. Let's just double check it with this guy again. Um, we don't need a scale, we're just going to do a, a meter here. Okay, that's, that's the bed going clunk. And we are touching the beam on the top, so we're, we're there. Okay? So, um, we're level now. We can go ahead and put our belt on. So we have to make sure that this is level when we put our belt on and when we tension it. So, going downtown, I want to grab your two M4, 4 millimeter by 10 millimeter long screws, button heads. Put your hammer nuts on there. This goes like so. And then we're gonna find the center. We're gonna find the center of this thing. And here's how we do that. We find the center. We want a perfect center. end of this, we swing that over until it gets to here. On the opposing side, there's your center. You just fold your tape down flat and just line that up with the where the tape creases over and you got your center. Um, now so I don't lose it, I'm just going to mark it on here. Now if I do something real stupid, I, can, I don't have to waste a bunch of tape. So, I'm going to tighten those up. Peek in the side there, you can see them flipping over 90 degrees. Uh, this one has a, a little guide in the middle of it. I don't know if you saw that when we put this on. Uh, that's neat because it, uh, it helps your, your nuts um, helps your nuts spin because they're in the middle of the rail. I don't know if you understand that, but um, those are neat. All right, so you take this, and this fits into this keeper in the slot, or I should say, uh, little capture inside the slot. Okay, we're going to push this back all the way because we'll be adjusting it out further. All right, next step is we're going to put this against the plastic, okay? That protects the nut against the plastic. You got a plain 5 millimeter nut, okay? 5 millimeter nut that threads on all the way and 
just hand tight, back off on it a little bit. You want a little bit of slop in there so you can, you can adjust that, do the adjustment on it. Next, you have two of these. These are actually spacers. They're the outside diameter. It's real uh, important that you use these. The outside diameter is the same diameter as the inner race of the bearing. Everybody sees that. That goes on next. Then our idler. Goes on. Doesn't matter which side. Both of them are the same. One more of those same spacers we talked about goes against the bearing. Okay. Next. This is the nylock nut. This has got the, the lock nut, the nylon washer in it to lock it down. Just spin that bad boy on there. This, by the way, is the uh, Creality uh, wrench that came in the kit. Now, real important. I, I, I did it, I tightened this a little too tight. You, you never want to feel any lumpiness or any vibration in the bearing as you go in with this. So there, nice and smooth. Bearing needs to just make no noise, make no vibration. Perfect, perfect tension. Okay, we're back all the way on that. We're going to take and we're just going to slip our belt over the top. Pull back on this. Okay, once again, no. I don't know if you can see this, we got a little angle going here. Um, I'm going to back off on a little bit. This doesn't need to be real tight, and it will tighten up uh, once the angle starts coming out of it. We're tightening the bottom nut on here, and we're tightening the, the shaft bolt to the mount. Okay? we got a really, really good tension on here. I could go just a little bit more. I always wait till I've got this tightened up. It draws the bolt going straight up and down, and you get a truer. I like a little more tension on here. I'm just going to back off a little bit and just feel a little more tension. I felt that pull forward. We're going to tighten that down now. Oops. Okay. Nice. That's about right. Okay, we're still good here. Now what happens is that once I drew tension up on that, we're making more space underneath that washer so you can see there's going to be a little play here. Um, we're going to go till we barely feel play. If we go too far, because we can't feel that crunchiness in here now, um, if we go too far, we're going to probably push down on that bearing and that actually will ruin the bearing. When I demonstrated that little crunchiness, that's really not good for the bearing. So I'm going to leave just a little bit of play in there. That's not going to hurt. I can I can see the little little crack of light in there. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, we got perfect tension on our belts. Last thing we need to do. Last thing we need to do. We're going to level this now. I've got this underneath there for a level. That kind of as when it was at rest, it kept it level. Got to have one of these. You can get them for like ten bucks at Harbor Freight. Sometimes for less on sale. Uh, this is a good one. This is a Matoyo. Had this one since they first came out with these. Um, we're gonna come down. We're gonna do a, just gonna put a little tension on this here. Okay, we're hitting the crossbar with this and the plate at the same time. Want to do that with this one too. We're up about yeah, roughly a millimeter on this side. And this is real important. This is how you level level this with the bed. Okay? We're going to take our Allen screw. I'm going to explain this first so you know what I'm doing. The set collar underneath here is, it's got a little set screw that comes out of it. There's two set screws on this or grub screws. You want to have that so your fingers aren't slipping on that on the collar down here you want to actually feel that grub screw on there and uh, that's going to be kind of your handle your traction on it um, and we know that if we look at these threads we can, can kind of see what direction we have to go i'm going to loosen this one first and then this one we know what direction we're going to have to go on it is 
if I go this way, you can see the threads are going to make this come up and make that go down. So um, we want to go down. So unscrewing it this way is the way we want to go. I'm going to just loosen this up. We're going to use our Allen. We're going to use our Allen wrench as a kind of a handle. We're going to screw down on it slightly and we're going to tighten this up. Leave it there. Check your measurement. We are about a half a millimeter now. So we're going to do that again. And do that again. Okay. We're, we're scratching the surface right now. We're, I don't know if you can hear that. We're just scratching. Just scratching the surface of the table with that. So we're level. We are perfectly level on this. So go ahead and tighten these up. Push down on these. Make sure they're down all the way when you do that. This one's already has a little tension on it, so we know we're there. I'm going to go ahead and just give this a little pop there. Belt's tight. Bar's perfectly level. Now, before you print anything, I, I leave my printer on during this um, little exercise. And you can keep it in the Prepare Move Z uh, screen. We'll stay up on this thing. So I'm going to press Move Z. And it says Move Axis 10 millimeters. We're going to go up and down a few times just to make sure that everything's free. No, no skipping or vibration in the belts or anything going on up here. So we just want to make sure everything's good. 112. Just run through this little test. It's looking good. Okay, everything's good. By the way, this is the second, third time I've installed it on this machine. I just want to show you something. And we're going to go up a little further here. Just to make sure that we don't have any binding all the way up. Not sure if I mentioned it uh, earlier in the video, um, but we sell this grease. This is actually um, a Teflon, a PTFE grease, and we get it from one of the large uh, companies that makes uh, lineal bearings. It's actually a lineal bearing lube. It's called Linear Lube, and um, unfortunately, they don't package it in small packages. We have to buy very large containers of it. Um, we've invested in um, a container, and we broke it down into some smaller ones that you guys can use for this so it's um food safe non-toxic uh, that's very important when you're doing this and unlike the lithium grease um, that people suggest that you use on this lithium grease actually soaks into plastic and uh, it will follow your plastic it'll stain your pieces um, thank you it will stain your your parts uh, and uh, it stinks. This stuff is odorless, colorless, uh, tasteless. I haven't ate it yet, but <laughs> they tell me it's tasteless. So maybe they said I'm tasteless. That, that's probably what it was. Um, but we're gonna roll this down again. I was up to 360 on this thing. And I'm just gonna roll it all the way down to zero. It's 82. And what we're gonna do then is we're gonna do a second test on our level on this. Um, while that's doing that, I want to show you the first print. I want to show you the first print. This is before. This is the same thing. I think I set the, the extrusion was a little high on this, and I got a little bit of, of goo on, on these. But this is the same print using this Creality. This this one just uh, just did this last night. Uh, just came off. It's even got some hair on it, fuzz on it. But this is i don't know if you can see that absolutely outstanding by leveling my beam and tightening up the the wheels on the x beam i have another video on that um it it, it just turned this into a whole different machine so um 
Oh, also, the other change I made to it was the guy wires. The, the guy wires, and I've got another video on that. If you're not familiar with these, uh, go back and see the um, video called um, Bad Vibes. And it goes over um, how we got to the, putting the system on, and then it uh, goes on to some of the science of vibration and how frequency works against uh, what we have going on here with this gantry. And uh, how to install one of these kits. Um, it's it really probably the best thing you can do for this, bar none, um, besides get rid of the real heavy glass on here. Um, so uh, I hope this I hope this clears everything up. We're gonna just check the level one more time. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be okay. Let me set. Oh look at this! It came right back down to the same spot. It's like half a millimeter. I'm, I'm gonna call that good enough right now. We can take that out in the bed. We can level that out in the bed. So, in fact, the bed may have been off to begin with. That's one of those things with these. Um, all right. Once again, folks, thanks for uh, thanks for dropping in. Um, it was my pleasure to show you how this this is done. Uh, we sell these kits. This is the only way to do it. I'm from the old school where they always say set it and forget it. Um, you don't want to be monkeying around with something back and forth. Um, we've created some stuff here where. Uh, you basically put it on your machine and set it and forget it. Um, there's enough involved in preparing for a print where you don't need to uh, fool around with bed leveling and things like that. If you do have a dual Z, you got like the 10S from Creality, you'll have what they call creep, uh, Z creep, and whenever the motor stops, the pull of the motor will shift. There's magnets that are pulling on it one way or the other, and it'll eventually get really out of whack. So. Um, my contention on that is I have dual Z's with the motors and I'm always fooling around with them trying to set it and it's just not the way to go. This is this is the way to go right here. So um, nothing really wears out uh, once you put this on there. Those bearings aren't going fast enough around to, to wear out or anything. This will last forever. Um, if not, we'll, uh, we have parts in stock. We always stock parts here. Um, if you uh, if, if you would, if anybody's interested in this kit, we sell a lot of these things and you need to get your order in because um, we have multiple suppliers that we order the parts from and to pass on a good deal to you. And um, we don't always have them, in, they don't always have them in stock and we don't always have them in stock. You could probably find all the parts except for the printed pieces and the bracket here. Um, but you'll find that you'll pay more if you try, if you try to get piecemeal this thing together than if you bought the whole kit from us. So we appreciate your patronage, and um, we're we're uh, we're here to help. If anybody um, wants to, uh, this will probably be a YouTube video. So if anybody wants to leave comments below, uh, please subscribe, subscribe, and come back to this again if you need to uh, refer back to it to learn how to adjust or if you need a little help with adjusting. Uh, the one Z to the other, getting it uh, getting it leveled off. Uh, but I can't say enough about this kit. This is a neat kit. Um, I love it. We worked real hard to make this kit available to everybody. The reason I uh, did the upgrades to this machine in this sequence was we're kind of gearing up uh, to install my Stinger. I invented a a automatic bed leveling system that works mechanically. Um, that's probably not going to make a lot of sense to everybody, but being a mechanical system, I had to get a, um, I had to get a utility patent on it. We had to wait for that patent to come back. So um, it operates using any kind of switch. You can use an induction switch on it. It comes with an end switch. You actually take the end switch off your uh, Creality, off your Z, and you put it on the, the uh, Stinger, and it uses that end switch. Those are really accurate, and that's as accurate as it has to be, but anybody who wants to put an induction switch or a capacitive switch, maybe they bought an induction system or a capacitive system and they want to adapt that system to this. This is the mechanical part that's sort of a, a, it's sort of a liaison between your table surface, your bed level surface, and the actual instrument itself. And the reason that's important is Temperature plays a really big part in the capacitive uh, leveling systems. And I learned that when I purchased one for my 500 by 500 Creality, and it has a 300 by 300 heating bed underneath it. Uh, 
consequently it wasn't giving me the readings around the edges of it uh, properly because the temperature was different and the other thing was that mounted off to the side of the head um, and you, you lose a lot of your table there becomes a shadow area on one side of your bed that you can't get to and behind it that you can't get to because you normally would uh, uh, mount it out in front and to one side uh, my system uses the, the very tip to go down and, and sample the surface and then it transfers or, or telescopes that information to that sensor whatever it may be and the sensor takes over and takes the measurement so um, guys um, once again I I apologize for not bringing that out but I had to wait for my patent number and uh, that will be coming out next week we um, we just received the number and it's taken me a little bit of time to compile the video on it it's kind of tough making these videos when you've got uh, when you wear all the hats that I wear around here but um, I really hope to see you in uh, the upcoming videos I appreciate you being here and uh, I'm real excited about the stinger still and I hope you are too please subscribe you'll be notified of it and as always like and subscribe if you have any questions please put them down. don't just give me a thumbs down tell me why your thumbs down in me I'll answer that I'll help you out I'll give you some information maybe there was something I said wrong maybe I stuttered too much let me know what it is. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. This is Dave Ashenbrenner, and I uh, can't wait to see you again. Thank you.